ब्रह्मा गुरुर विष्णु गुरुर देवो महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम सो मै फ्रेंड्स यू रिमेम्बर वी कवर्ड फोर सूत्र before so again i am let us repeat those four sutras and uh, it is very easy to understand the entire yoga sutra if you classify into into a particular heading so the first four sutras tells you what is yoga and what is not yoga another way to say what is a yogic state or what is a non yogic state you see that or you can say what is a meditative state and what is not meditative state so when you know you see you group all these sutras under a particular heading so then you it is very easy for you to understand अथ योग अनुशासन दैट इज द फर्स्ट वन यू नो दैट वी डिड कवर वी अंडरस्टूड अथ योग अनुशासन अकॉर्डिंग टू द कमेंट्री ऑफ व्यासा डू यू रिमेम्बर द फाइव सब्जेक्टिव स्टेट्स ऑफ द माइंड गाइडेड बाय द थ्री गुनाज Alex was just saying that I'm not an early riser, but anyhow, this beer guy is here, so I have to be there. So this is what is tamoguna. So the tamoguna changes the mind, mental state. Just an example, ah, huh? just an example. <laughs> so you see that hands. so so he explained the five subjective states and then he said yoga chitta vritti nirodha now see the difference there are five subjective states of the mind but in the second sutra he says vritti empty the thought from the mind yeah thoughts simply take it thought behavior attitude if i empty the thoughts from the mind that is yoga so these thoughts are objective states of the mind we are not removing the five subjective states do you understand five subjective states so here he is talking of the thought pattern then tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam so when you when you Ah, uh, empty the content of the mind. So, what is the result? Awakening takes place. The knowledge of the reality, or the you are settled in real self. But it, as long as you are not settled there, then what happens? Until you succeed in meditative state, the mind is constantly living in ignorance. What is ignorance? ignorance is not illiteracy ignorance means incomplete knowledge of who am i i have a wrong address for your home i cannot reach there simple so when i don't know about my true nature and you say something i react but reaction is not my true nature one example so these are the four foundation foundation very good now see i have grouped another uh six or seven i would say seven sutras in the second category so we will chant 
and then uh, we will continue so what is the now fifth sutra comes what is the fifth sutra so let us do the chanting so from sutra number 5 to 11 uh, you give a, you can give a title that how the mind is the cause of suffering and means of freedom you see that just title it now john was just saying that he was he went to Florida, workshop is cancelled, but I picked up one word for the military. The cause of the suffering for everyone is the same. Inside. Whether it is military, whether it is you, me, or relationship, that is what we are going to understand today in detail. So you see that? how the mind is the cause of the suffering and also the means of the freedom. That is what is explained by Patanjali in the seven sutra. And that we will understand from the very first sutra. So let us chant together Vrityaha Panchatayaha Panchatayaha Klesta o Klesta Klesta o Klesta You see that you have a, a double dot after every in Sanskrit if you see this. So we have to say again Vrityaha Vrityaha Panchatayaha Anchatayaha Klesta a Klesta So Master Patanjali is saying that th there are five types of thought pattern. We all are human being. I'm just touching briefly and then we will go deeply. We all are human being. Then what is classification? First classification, I am man, you are women, except one John. Yeah. Then what is another classification? You can do a lot of classifications. Huh? Uh, you, you are Italian immigrant, I am mean, uh, Indian immigrant. Like this, go on. So th all thoughts are one. So what he says? Thoughts can be classified into five categories. Still they are thoughts. And each category of the thoughts are painful and non-painful. Now, then what happens? Then Master Patanjali explains what are these five types of thoughts. Pramana, Viparyaya, Vikalpa Vikalpa Nidra Nidra Smritayaha Smritayaha You see the sound of ha comes only in the last but otherwise you speak a eh, normal pronunciation Pramana Pramana Viparyaya Viparyaya Nid Vikalpa Vikalpa Nidra Nidra Smritayaha Smritayaha So these are the five category, five classification of the thoughts. I just explained. We all are human beings and so all our thoughts, the very Interesting thing is that Master says even the sleep is also one type of thought pattern in the mind. See that? It resolves a lot of problems once we understand that. And others are, we know, right perception, false perception, uh, imagination. 
राइट परसेप्शन फॉल्स परसेप्शन इमेजिनेशन स्लीप एंड द मेमोरी सो दे आर ऑल सो नाउ ही एक्सप्लेन्स ईच वन प्रत्यक्ष अनुमान अनुमान आगमा आगमा प्रमाण प्रमाणानि 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 प्रत्यक्ष प्रत्यक्ष अनुमान अनुमान आगमा आगमा प्रमाणानि प्रमाणानि Yes, so he is explaining what is the right knowledge or right perception. So right knowledge comes by direct perception. I am seeing you; you are seeing me through this sense organ, and it also comes from inference. Huh? You hear the noise of water dropping outside, so inference. I don't see. it's raining outside i don't see it from my eyes but i see i feel it i infer uh, i infer uh, looking at the beer guy you can infer he's a crazy guy so there are a lot of inferences yeah so <laughs> you can make an inference and the third is agama the word agama means the word is a testimony what is that word now she is lara Hundred percent sure. You see, I'm speaking word. See, she is there. She is now. She is Alex. She is Kate. So there are three types, three categories of right knowledge. Why we are studying Patanjali Yoga Sutra? Under which category it comes? Agama, third category. Why we are repeating these sutras? Because these sutra gives us the right perspective of yoga. You see, it is not an inference, right? I have yet to realize the higher state. So, which testimony will work? Words means text, knowledge written in the book. passed on to us by great masters now you can link everything with the tradition did you get it no inference now what is opposite of this category of the thoughts is known as vipariyaya vipariyayo vipariyayo mithya gyanam प्रोनाउंसिएशन विपर्यो विपर्यो मिथ्यानम तदूप प्रतिष्ठम 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 प्र ती ती थम थम प्रतिष्ठम प्रतिष्ठम सो इट्स अ फॉल्स कंसेप्शन इट्स अ फॉल्स नॉलेज Now see the same one example. You say that you know I am crazy, but crazy is a certification you are giving to me. I don't accept it. It's a wrong knowledge. No human being is crazy. It's the mind that becomes crazy. Are you understanding that? Just to see one simple example. So the third category. is known as imagination or fancy shabd gyan shabd gyan 
Chabjana. Anupati. Anupati. Vastu Shunyu. Vastu Shunyu. Vikalpaha. Vikalpaha. Shabda Jnana. Shabda Jnana. Anupati. Anupati. Vastu Shunyu. Vastu Shunyu. Vikalpaha. Imagination, fancies, you already know it. So we will also go to the sutra number 10. Abhava Pratyaya. Abhava Pratyaya. Alambana. Alambana. Tamo Vritti Nidra. Tamo Vritti Nidra. That's wonderful. Abhava Pratyaya Abhava Pratyaya Alambana Alambana Tamo Vritti Nidra Tamo Vritti Nidra Think of it. Tell me, is sleep absence of experience or experience of absence? Neither. I was going to say both. <laughs> that we are going to discuss at length. In under, what exactly is the sleep? It is an experience of absence. That's why we don't have any thoughts, awareness of the body, the world, etc. And if you think otherwise, then you have also to explain it. Now the fifth one, Anubhuta Vishaya. Anubhuta Vishaya. Sampramoshaha. Sampramoshaha. Smritihi. Smritihi. Anubhuta Vishaya. Anubhuta Vishaya. Sampramoshaha. Sam Pramosha Smritihi Smritihi Memory how, how do you know that we have to come together today because of Smriti? How do you remember your name because of Smriti? So there are a lot of stuffs huh, from the so now see that we will take up with total clarity what does it mean by the fifth sutra vrata yaha panchata yaha klishta o klishtaha so which vrata yaha panchata yaha so if we create a question uh, pertaining to the fifth sutra it means what that why mind has painful and non-painful contents means why I suffer from pain and pleasure. Uh, simple. And along. There was a monkey. We should talk about monkeys because they are our ancestors. Anyhow. Have you put monkey in your ancestry tree? <laughs> no. Anyhow. We always talk we come from monkey, but we never put monkey in our ancestry tree. Anyhow. So there was a monkey in a farm and the farm was a banana's farm. And the farmer was picking up the monkeys and putting into the basket. The monkey was sitting on a tree looking at the farmer. So when the farmer goes little far away from the basket, 
The monkey jumped into the basket, took up the bananas and returned to the tree. That is our normal nature to receive pleasure from the world. Why monkey jumped into the basket and jumped again onto the tree? Because he was enjoying. It's a kind of a pleasure. Whether it is food or sex or money or any stuff. Whatever it is. And the farmer was pissed off. He said, what the hell I should do? So what he did, see that. So he narrowed the opening of the basket. It was totally open. So he narrowed, made the opening very small. Pick up the bananas, used to put into the basket, and the monkey came. He put his hand into the basket. Held five bananas. It expanded. Now his hand cannot come out. He went for pleasure. What he is getting now. So the farmer returned and he thrashed monkey again and again and he was crying. Where I go, I go for pleasure. Result is pain. That is our journey of life. <laughs> Yoga says, get out. He, he thrashed and thrashed and thrashed. And by thrashing, time came when all the bananas left the monkey's hand. He realized, oh, this is the way. And he jumped onto the tree. Ask yourself, ask yourself, how long you are going to suffer? Do you want to live your life in the way monkey had experienced? That is what happens. That is what I say. I marry to be happy. And that is what I say. I divorce to be happy. Did you understand that? The story gives you the entire understanding of this sutra, painful and non-painful thoughts pattern. <laughs> Not, no, when I say um, marriage and divorce, it applies to everything. It applies to the monkey heroes. Huh? Yeah. Isn't it? It applies to the monkey. Oh, goody, goody, I let me eat more bananas. I will be happy. And <laughs> mind has a thought to get more bananas, right? Without understanding. What is that point of understanding? That there is a thought that I should pick up the banana, but be Behind that thought, behind that thought, what is there? Pleasure seeking. Right? So there are two things. One is thought and what is cooking behind that thought? Hey, Kate, you are beautiful. So what is cooking behind the thought? That decides my action. See the Eastern psychology. Match any principle of modern psychology. We have more than 250 psychologists for the last 250 years. Starting from the Freud, Adler, Jung, Um, huh? I am Robert S. Aguilli, William James, and compare this principle. That is, once you understand this fifth sutra, 50% of understanding comes to you. So what the sutra says, huh? you see that? Now what happens, what was cooking in the mind behind that action of picking up the banana pleasure, what result 
first few times the result was pleasure, no, no problem. But he was being thrashed. What was the result? Pain. <laughs> huh? Honey, I love you. I love you. I love you. And the honey says, I hate you. Everything is gone. Apply to this food, huh? to the profession, to the thought pattern. This is what it is. So now, now uh, we will understand what Vyasa says. Vyasa, I, did I, do you still remember Vyasa? Vyasa commented on the Yoga Sutra. It is considered the most authoritative commentary on Yoga Sutra. This is what the Vyasa says. And this we are opening up. We are going to open up everything. What he has written about this sutra. If I open up based on my knowledge, it is wrong. Why it is wrong? Because I have to accept the authority of the knowledge passed on to me. Do you see that? Otherwise we don't believe it and we say it's a tradition. I follow the tradition, you see. How can how you follow the tradition when you do not understand? Vratayaha, Panchatayaha, Kleshta or Kleshta. Simple translation is, very simple translation, that all the thoughts that are present in the mind can have be classified as fivefold. Uh, that is why I explained you just, uh, we all are human beings and then you have uh, further classification. But still, we all are human beings. All are thoughts. But thoughts are classified into five types. Then all five types means now every type has two, two, two categories. Either they are painful or non-painful. So it means total Types is 10, 5 types of painful and 5 types of non-painful. Got it? Simple. Step by step. Now, thoughts enter into the mind by default or by choice. Huh? When I speak, the thoughts are entering by choice. But where your what your mind is thinking may be by default. You see that? Why I said this? The relationship between the real self and the mind has neither beginning nor end. It continues. Understand that. You know why I am covering this sutra in detail? Because you all are professionals. And the best thing is that you start observing yourself so that you can change your life. You can change the lives of others. So anytime these thoughts enter by default or by choice, then I what I said, the relationship between the real self has neither a beginning nor an end. Go back to the second sutra, what we studied, yoga shtyatta vratti nirodha. Yoga is emptiness of the mind. So, <coughs> in order to reach to the highest meditative state, this mind should be made empty. When it is made empty, the knowledge of the reality will be revealed. After the knowledge of the reality is revealed, does your mind stop functioning? 
No, it starts working. So, relationship between the real self and the mind has no beginning, no end. Now you will speak out. Now your all the thoughts are spoken, expressed. How? With knowledge and wisdom. Why? Because there is no suffering. Knowledge of the reality dawns and hence you have brought an end to the suffering in your life. But now what happens? Now compare the same example of a monkey. What was cooking behind the mind of a monkey seeking banana? Pleasure. So now that pleasure is not working behind any thought. Neither pain nor pleasure. Why? Why? You are already living into that state of happiness and peace. You are not seeking anything outside. Are you getting it? If I am seeking pleasure, that intent is there. Pleasure intent is there behind that thought from an object, from a person. Now that is absent. Why it is absent? Because real self is already supplying that permanent peace, happiness, joy and love. Are you getting it? See the depth of Eastern psychology. Every thought changes its meaning. You know, sometimes we say to our dear ones, Hey, hey, are you crazy? That means we love that person. You see? Uh, the sentence, the thought has changed its meaning. Are you getting it? The mind is active all the time. Mind is active all the time, whether it is in sleep, whether it is in dream. Mind is active all the time. It has no beginning and end. Third point. Every thought has a beginning and every thought has an end. The relationship between the real self and the mind has no beginning and end. But every thought has a beginning and a mind. So how I take it when people come to me and they say, you know, I have a lot of problem. Ah, oh, there was no problem in the past. There is a problem today. Problem will come to an end. What yoga does? Monkey was thrashed again and again and again because pleasure intent was there and he received the pain. That is our nature in the world, day-to-day -day living. Can we understand, have a right knowledge before we act? That is the possible solution. And if we have that awareness before we <coughs> think, before we think, speak and act, the life evolves much faster. What is yoga? Compressing your evolution in a single year, in a few months or few years or few hours of earthly existence. You accelerate that evolution. Your learning is very fast. By repeat experience of pain and the pleasure, at last we say, oh, let us say sugar is a poison. But we already suffer from diabetes. But sugar was neither a poison nor an object of pleasure. Are you getting it? Second point, what the Vyasa says, 
Mind is an inner instrument and its contents are thoughts. Sense organs are external instrument. What are the contents of my eyes at present? You all. You all. What are the contents of my ear? Any sound that I am hearing? They are external instruments of knowledge. Mind is an inner instrument of knowledge. Clear? That's how, you know, I'm building blocks. One block, second block, third block, and then we will enter into a clarity of understanding. Pay a little more attention. The car is running. Car is an instrument. And running car is a thought. Are you getting it? Running car is a thought. So if your car is running at a higher speed, you give a break sudden, sudden break, what happens? The car continues to skid. But in your place, Kate, it will continue to skid. I came uh, to U.S. in 2007, perhaps in August, September. I landed up in New Jersey. So in December, I was driving which car? Lincoln. 1985 model <laughs> and I didn't know how to <laughs> drive the car in the snow <laughs> Alexandra is thinking what I'm going to say next <laughs> I didn't know and the, Get a soup. on a on a crossing the car skid and it circled at least five or six times. We all four were there in the car. <laughs> that was the first and the last time. <laughs> but anyhow, we are still alive. Mm. You do a lot of mistakes. You, you learn from it. That's the way the journey is. <laughs> <coughs> You see that? So this is what happens. Now understand, if the mind is constantly wondering what happens in our life, we make accidents. Do you understand? Clearly? No, no, who cares? You know, let me have, let me start our gossip. In the gossip, the mind starts wandering. One pack, two pack, three pack, and then mind is out. We should, that is the meaning, we sh should have a mindful living. Do you understand? This is what is mindful living. Normally what we say, mindful of the breath. How long you can be mindful of the breath? Mindful of my gossip. Wandering mind. Did you understand that? See the practical consideration of these sutras. Once you are clear, you take over your entire mind and the life, you start living in peace and happiness, only then you can help others. It is not like any other profession. You study yoga to study yourself. Simple. If you don't study yourself, it's gone. Now we say how many thoughts are there in the mind? Infinite. You see, step by step understanding. So how many thoughts are there? Infinite number. And every thought is either painful or non-painful. Any thought that enters. John, you look handsome. So now the John may think 
this thought is expressed in a just to just to in a negative way or a positive way you see that every thought even if you appreciate someone and if the other person does not take in a right way every thought is a either they are painful or non painful are you getting it innumerable number of thoughts thought is there now what the master patanjali is saying even if you have infinite number of these modifications of the mind modification means what change i see john my mind is modified it has taken the shape of a john modified that is that is why i only say he is john i don't say john is kate because now kate is another modification lara is another modification you see that do you see it is an objective content of the mind so all these modifications are infinite number but what patanjali says he makes a bigger statement still you can make the mind empty they are infinite they are categorized as painful and non painful no i am stressed i have lot of stress this is a thought now compare how the psychotherapist understands when a person says i am stressed and how we understand are you getting our perception is totally different psychotherapist will say oh you have stress so let us apply depression inventory to find out your level of stress and then they will dig into the life history and they say ah oh, they will go to fried then they jump to william james then they jump to robert as <laughs> it's good we also jump it but our principles are same throughout <laughs> that is why i said it is better to leave that why to jump between all also all the thoughts are huh? you understood millions they are, but still patanjali makes a big statement ask any psychotherapist can you cure anxiety no means what do you mean by certain thought patterns can be completely emptied psychotherapist will say no not possible we can manage it you see that's a difference that creates a lot of conflict so when you talk to a psychotherapist or psychiatrist make them clearly understand and even to the people who come to you having these mental challenges how to recognize the thoughts that causes pain or pleasure another question he is answering vyasa is answering how a particular thought how you recognize a thought in your mind modification in your mind causing pain suffering if any modification or a thought is guided by the five klesha five causes of suffering that will bring pain at the outset i explained you this i gave you the story of monkey pleasure seeking in the mind but the action is different jumping from a tree to the basket yes yes john should i watch now or later okay i will watch later <laughs> it's it's in a video of a monkey trap It's oh. a short video of a monkey. Oh, monkey trap. Okay, okay. 
Ah, that's very good. We will watch later. So do you see that? If there is five fold klesha suffering behind a thought, it will result in two pain. Do whatever you want to do. What are these fivefold? Avidya, ignorance. Second is asmita, ego. Third is attachment. Fourth is detachment. Fifth is strong identification with the body. Huh? That sutra is there in the second chapter. Avidya, smita, rag, dvesh, abhinivesh, pancha, klesha. Are you listening to me for the sake of yourself or are you listening to me and collecting the information for others? Here and now. A difference between pain and the pleasure. Are you, did you understand this point? That any modification in the mind guided and dictated by five-fold suffering will end in suffering. Do whatever you want to do. Clear? You have to bring all those, you know what we say? Bring all the dots together. And then you know in which state you are living here and now. Here and now. So objective states of the mind in a waking state causes pain and pleasure. Now you see another relationship, waking state. I am a waker. So when I am a waker, my external instruments are always open to these modifications of the mind. What are you saying? So simple, my eyes goes to brandy, my mind says brandy, one thought. To Alex, second thought, Lara, third thought. And behind it, something more is cooking inside. Shape of a brandy, size. Uh, expression. You see that? If those contents are not there, I live in the present moment. Then only I live in the present moment. Simply saying living in the present moment, okay, I'm living in the present moment. But I have a lot of stress. <laughs> it will not work. Are you getting it? Brittany? Today Brittany's video is open, you know. Normally she is. Objective states of the mind in a waking state causes pain and pleasure because behind the mind these five fold suffering, five fold causes of the suffering is constantly working. It is ready to work. It is ready to React. How dare you say me? I don't agree with you. You remember what happened yesterday. You recall it in your relationship and you are living. So what master says? Are you getting it? That feel of it? You wake up today. You had certain thoughts that popped up into your mind based on those five-fold suffering. What are those five-fold suffering? Ignorance, ego, attachment, detachment, and yearning desire to live means strong identification with the body. That is there. It's already there behind the thought. I am not aware. And that will take over the thought. The thought will be expressed into action and that is the cause of the painful thought process. Are you clear? 
are you clear? So something behind the thought. You know, last time I said, what did I say? That why you cannot keep smiling even for two hours in a session? Something is already behind. Okay, you say me to smile, so I'm smiling, but there's a lot of pressure in me. That pressure is fivefold. <laughs> so, it will never happen. Try to do it. If that <laughs> be. Oh, uh, Alexandra. <laughs> no, no, that's it. <laughs> I need a quick potty break. <laughs> okay. Now see what should be there behind every thought. So that fivefold suffering should not be there. Clear. But what should be there? Viveka in the intellect. Viveka means discernment. And Vairagya, this passion. Now think, if the monkey is thinking, looking at the farmer, and he thinks, what I need? Bananas. I can take bananas. I, I can jump onto the tree and uh, get the bananas. Why should I go to the basket to pick up the bananas? So now see, there are twofold understanding according to the Vyasa that if behind every modification of the mind, if it is Klesha, the fivefold suffering, fivefold affliction behind the thought, it will, it will make your mind swing like a pendulum. Pain, pleasure, pain, pleasure. That is what I say. I am happy. I'm happy being married. I'm now happy being divorced. <laughs> so what does it mean, divorce? I'm happy. What is that cause? Detachment. What makes me happy to marry? Attachment. From where the attachment and detachment has come? From the ego. From where the ego has come? From the ignorance. Or oh, there are fivefold. But if the viveka is working behind every thought, viveka, discernment, uh, we will understand what is that discernment. Simple way, discernment to separate real from the unreal. You separate real from the unreal. That is discernment. So when you separate real from the unreal, what happens? The mind moves into the state of dispassion. What is this passion? I'm not interested neither in pleasure or pain. So when you're not neither interested in pleasure and a pain, the mind remains quiet. Quiet mind is happy mind. You have already achieved the emptiness of the mind. It's not a big deal. But when you have a right knowledge, you have a clarity. I always tell that if I have a correct address of your home, I will reach there. So for correct address, I must know. I must have a right understanding. Are you getting it? Did you understand? So behind every thought, if there is Viveka, Viveka follows, Vairagya, discernment follows, dispassion, Dispassion follows the six inner treasures that I covered in the Upanishads in the last talk. Do you understand? Did you? You guys are busy. Did you get a chance to listen to <laughs> those six inner treasures? Brandy. <laughs> no, we are busy, you know. Busy in what? What the <laughs> monkey was busy. Think of that. It is more important to put the mind in order with Viveka and 
vairagya with discernment and dispassion than being busy in anything if i want to change my life now go a little deeper avidya ignorance makes the mind impure avidya means ignorance an absence of this passion puts the mind into endless suffering you bring the dispassion in your mind and i will challenge you whether you suffer from any pain who is saying master i am challenging you because of what patanjali is teaching us now i am living in peace and happiness then only i can give peace and happiness to others Did I tell you the story a guy whose brother was having an acute depression and hallucination he went to a psychiatrist and he said You see doc my brother has a peculiar hallucination so what is that Oh he is imagining that he is a chicken So how long it has been happening for the last 3 years and you have come now No I was waiting for the egg And the psychiatrist says to the brother that okay once they have he has the egg bring some for meals <laughs> No I'm not saying, I'm not criticizing Sorry Lara <laughs> I'm just saying I'm just saying the this comes as a fact I have experienced in my life as a counselor in India so avidya makes the mind so here the what is the principle absence of dispassion puts the mind into endless suffering the presence of avidya cannot remove the effect of wrong notions and perceptions and hence you you always continue to suffer that is why they say that let me manage your anxiety let me not help you transcend the anxiety now see other perception the way the vyasa explains every experience in the world or with the world is painful if guided by ignorance five fold ignorance every experience with the world and in the world with discernment and dispassion is non painful is totally non painful so at least you have taken the first step Alexander, where is the smile? <laughs> so Patanjali used the two words klesta or klesta, meaning painful, non-painful. Every thought is experienced as non-painful or non when there is a right perception due to discernment and dispassion. Can I make a big statement? Zero state of pleasure is non-painful. Painful thoughts caused by, again remember, painful thoughts, modification of the mind is caused by klesha, the suffering. now give interpretation and contemplate when we say ignorance is bliss we have a famous it's an american proverb ignorance is bliss is really ignorance a bliss 
and we continue to gather those moments, continue to gather the impressions in our mind, and at a later stage, we suffer too much. Ignorance is incomplete knowledge caused by the ego, attachment, detachment and strong identification with the body. Do you see that? And then what happens? We are not aware of the thoughts in ignorance, but it hides behind the ignorance. I don't know the intent. That is why we say ignorance is bliss, but hides. Hidden ignorance will cause suffering in the life. Now, see, I'm bringing another word so that, you know, you can easily understand. So when I say ignorance is bliss, I'm accumulating lot of impressions inside, but I'm not aware. Clear? So where they get accumulated? Patanjali says they accumulated in the karmashaya. The word, Sanskrit word, karmashaya. Sometimes the karmashaya is also known as destiny. It is also known as Ah, from the law of karma, what it is known as? Patanjali has used it beautifully in, uh, in the second chapter. So what he says, karma shayas, the storehouse of all the impressions of the actions we have done, karma shaya. That karma shaya is also referred to as destiny. It is also known as the storehouse of impressions. Getting it? No. You see that what happens? There is a paper. There is a paper. So on one side I write Lara. When I see the other side, I see some impressions. Isn't it? Any word that is written? Right? And I said, you are wonderful. Impression inside is also accumulated. You are not good. Impression inside is accumulated. So these impressions are accumulated in a storehouse that is known as Karmashaya. Or we can say simply that is a destiny. Right? Clear? A revelation. When you study it again and again and you say, okay, why my mind is thinking that this guy is wrong? So the first step is to become aware of that thought and check what is cooking, what the mind is cooking behind that thought. Okay, that person is wrong or right, forget about it. What is cooking in behind? You will find the impressions, the imprint that continues to store in your life. That is what the destiny is. That is from where the law of karma begins. So you see that the Vyasa has explained beautifully everything. Now go this. Now do you know what is Shreyas and Prayas? With the painful and non-painful thoughts. Shreya Praya. Shreyas Prayas. So this, the Vyasa says, explains that this mind is like a river, but it has two flow. Sometime it is thinking good about a person, at other time it starts thinking bad about that person. You see that? Yeah, it happens. It happens with even our honeys also. Not a big deal. Yeah? So when the mind moves, with a thought pattern, what is right and good, it is known as Shreyas, the one flow of river. When the mind moves with the thought, what, is, what I like and pleasant is another flow of a river. So one flow of the mind is dominated by what is right and good. How I evaluate right and good? By discernment and dispassion. Are you getting it? I'm connecting all the dots. Otherwise you have to listen to it again. And now when the thought pattern is dominated by prayers means what? It is dominated by what I like, what is pleasant to me. 
from where what I like and what is pleasant to me comes. It comes from the fivefold suffering. What is the fivefold? Ignorance. What is ignorance in it when I like you? Why I like you? For happiness. So you are an object of happiness for me. That is the problem. Did you get it? Alex, can you move up so that I can see you much better? Yes. Do you see that? Simple thing in the mind. I become aware of a thought. That behind that thought is the cause of the pain and the cause of the non-painful experience is already located. That painful experience, that non-painful experience is not located outside. Finished. Period. Can I live into that awareness? When I live into that awareness, then this mindfulness is a play and a fun. You can live into that state here and now. You can make your life beautiful. Wonderful. So until now, did we understand that Patanjali is saying we have millions and millions and millions of modifications of the mind can be classified into five. One category of classification. Second category of classification. Every modification or every thought pattern is either painful or non-painful. So there are two classifications, right? Two types of classification. How many of you believe and agree and declare the wandering mind is crazy mind? So wandering mind may be crazy and may not be crazy at all. We are studying Eastern psychology. We are not taking a principle from the Western psychology. What I'm doing, I'm making my mind wander from the one word to the second to the third, from one sentence to the second, to the third, and that is how I am teaching you. <laughs> when I am driving, I am aware of the rear mirror, front mirror, right lane, left lane, speed of the car, my mind is wandering at different points. Is that wandering mind a crazy mind? We will understand that. Just, just I'm giving an idea, giving an understanding. So Patanjali says we have to understand all the five classifications of this modification and every modification are, is either painful or non-painful. That is where it comes. Are you getting? See that? <coughs> now... Why you study yoga? To study yourself. Now you study your own thought pattern. <clears throat> your mind is very clear. You are practicing. The time comes. It's not a magic. You can read the thoughts of others easily. Don't take it a big issue. They come naturally. Because of your expression of the eye, there are 70 indications my master used to guide us. There are 70 indications either you express through the words or through the eyes, through your sitting, through your posture. That tells the story. Anyhow, karma shaya, we are 
going back to reservoir of the karma created by the thoughts. That is what I said, destiny. Every thought enters into the mind, creates impressions behind the mind. Now what I'm saying? See that. Every thought enters into the mind. Whether you like it, you don't like it, it creates an impressions behind the mind. Now my honey was so good, you know, a couple of years back. Now he is crazy. I hate him. I Hold on. It is creating impressions in your mind. Warn your mind. Tell your mind, I don't want to create any impression. No, I like him. I like him. I like her. Don't create any kind of infatuation. Hold on. Hold on. Awareness. Here and now. So every thought that enters into the mind creates impressions behind the mind. And that goes on accumulating. They are stored as a data in your hard drive known as the storehouse or karma shaya. Storehouse. Clear? The existing impressions interact with the impressions that you create every day. Existing impressions already there. You are creating more impressions and ultimately they are stored in a data known as the hard drive. Even though it is a soft drive, but for the sake of understanding, so it uh, it is compressed, it is compressed, it is made a zip file. So that zip file is known as Vasana. Vasana. Vasana in your mind. And that Vasana becomes your destiny. <laughs> then what happens, because you have thought so much positive or negative, with attachment or detachment about your honey, in both the cases, impressions is already there in the seed form. And that seed grows into a plant the moment you see your honey. And that is expressed as a thought outside. And that thought you say, oh, I am totally tired of this guy or this girl. Now I said guy and girl means in all the situations, in any condition. Clear? What we think today is highly likely based on the impressions of the past. Now see, how you think, what you think, how you respond is more or less based on the impressions of the past. These impressions are the sum of the previous and the current birth. Give rise to the next birth. That is the principle of law of karma. But why it is so? Why the hell you are talking? It gives my thought pattern gives me the next birth and the current birth. We need to understand. We are understanding. We are going deeper. So vasna is like a seed and when they grow are called sanskaras or the impression. When outer events or objects trigger, it causes thought in the mind. Then these thoughts are either painful or non-painful. Clear? A lot of small points, uh, Vyasa, the commentator covered. So more and more, you listen to it and then you understand. You wake up in the morning, your mood is upset. Why? Because of the impressions. Law of karma and the thoughts. Thoughts are necessary evil, but thought is also a product of knowledge. Without thought, I cannot know anything in the world. That is why we are a human being. Thoughts express speech and action, either wrong or right. The law of karma follows. I told you law of karma, a destiny, a storehouse. 
when we apply. Now see that this is the most beautiful part. People miss it. And when you miss it, then you are dragging your feet and hands and your eyes and your mind and intellect into yoga and you don't progress. <laughs> what is that point? The master says discernment, dispassion, six inner treasures that we covered in the last this talk of the Upanishads. You simply live into that discernment, dispassion with the six inner treasures. What will happen? This law of karma does not apply to you. What? What you are talking? The law of karma will come to an end from today, from this time. It is gone. You are happy. So I have listened to a couple of the talks when I was in New Jersey. They invited me and they gave a very grim, dark picture of law of karma. You are bound to suffer. Forget about suffering. When you live into that discernment and dispassion with its six inner treasures, you are happy from now, will remain happy forever. Is it boring? Don't believe anyone. Believe the teachings of the masters. Believe the teachings of this master. When the master says the moment you are in the state of, so where the discernment and uh, dispassion lives, ask yourself, in the intellect. What intellect gives you knowledge? See that? What intellect gives you knowledge? How you receive knowledge? By thinking. So what should be the pattern of thinking? Based on the principles of Eastern wisdom and yoga. Treasures. Are you getting it? So it means I must digest, assimilate, absorb all these principles so clearly so there is a right knowledge and the right knowledge liberates you from the karma. Law of karma that is gone. A significant difference between a meditator and the non-meditator. That is the conclusion. Are you getting it? Clear? The thoughts or modifications cause right or wrong perception. Well, pick up another thing. When the mind becomes a faithful servant of the real self, I'm using stressing again. When the mind becomes the faithful servant of the real self, it leads to right thoughts. Right thoughts cause the right knowledge and a right perception in your daily life. These five types of thoughts with the painful and non-painful experiences are like clouds in the sky. Another commentator gives this uh, metaphor. So I'm using the same metaphor. And I told you clearly that I don't know anything, but I really understand what these masters meant. So you have clouds in the sky is like painful and non-painful. When the clouds leaves, the sky is clear. The sky is not affected by any clouds. No thought pattern can affect our real nature, our real self. That is why Master says, empty the mind of its contents, empty the clouds so that you can see, you can experience, you can live into that real self. Why real self? 
because the real self is of the nature of peace and happiness, love and wisdom. Life changes from today. Another part that needs to be understood. As long as the mind identifies with the real self, mind says, I am the real self. That is the meaning of identification. What the mind says? Come on, I am the body. I am the mind. I am intelligent. I am crazy. I am fool. I have stress. So what happens? This mind is constantly changing by whom? Can you guess? By whom? Ego. These thoughts are constantly changing changing because of three gunas, three qualities, sato guna, rajo guna, tamo guna. Why? Can you answer it? We are answering slowly. You see the Vyasa, the commentator says, what is in the Patanjali's mind? I am writing, I am explaining, understand that. Then other five or six, you know, sutras in this group will will be just a play and a fun. So are you understanding first part? That all these thoughts, painful, non-painful, caused by the three gunas. But why? Go on asking the question. If you don't ask the question and you leave it and then, no way. We'll understand that. So what happens? The mind will continue to work until, until liberation, until awakening is attained. Through the body, mind, sense organ, intellect and ego. So it means, what? These three gunas work through the body, mind, intellect, and the ego. Why they are working? Why they are working? Because I am living in ignorance. How long it will continue to work? As long as the liberation is at hand, freedom is at hand. That is why I have next birth, this birth, previous birth. Don't go too far. Consider yesterday life was your previous birth. It has taken a shape in today's birth. And what you are, the way you are living today is going to take a future, yes, tomorrow's life. Now just think of it, one, one simple thing. You have a di discernment. Oh, I understood. All the thoughts and modifications of the mind causes me suffering. What was before in your mind? My honey is responsible for my suffering. Now what is that <coughs> thought pattern? Oh, it is my mind is responsible. You live into that thought. What will happen tomorrow? You, you have a less reaction against your honey, isn't it? You have started your journey. No, honey means anything. Honey means car, your dog, your pet, dear pet. I also know. I am also, you know, attached. You know, when I see. Pets are coming to you and guiding you. Come on, listen to this crazy guy. Don't pay attention to me. I believe so. Do you understand? Non-painful thoughts will change to painful thoughts. How? 
Now in another question. We are answering every question, every bit. That is what the Vyasa has answered. Huh? So the Patanjali and the Vyasa says, you have a category of negative thoughts, you have a category of positive thoughts. Just take an example. They will remain as it is. What should I do? If I move to the positive thoughts, I ask these positive thoughts to dominate the negative one. That is the first step of the journey. Second part, but uh, will these negative thoughts will remain? Yes, they will remain. How long they will remain? Until the ignorance behind that thought is removed. What causes the ignorance? I have repeated again and again, fivefold suffering. Ignorance, attachment, detachment, <clears throat> ego, and yearning desire for the life. Why I have a yearning desire for the life? Because I am scared of death. Why I am scared of death? Because I claim I am the body. If I am not the body, body has to take birth and die. Today or tomorrow. Leslie, are you clear? So why I am scared of the death? Because I claim that I am the body. So what Patanjali is saying, you are not the body, you are not the mind, you are not the intellect. Come on, you are not. So when I say I am not, how do I separate it from Viveka, this discernment, this servant, this, this passion? <clears throat> My master used to say that ignorance needs to be removed with commitment and sincerity by regular practice with wisdom to settle in a meditative state. It will lead to the freedom from the mind. <coughs> now there are two parts. One is what I express in terms of the thought and the speech and the action and other is the vasana, the storehouse. Which comes first? <coughs> Answer that question. <laughs> chicken or the egg? Yes, chicken and the egg. But here it is very clear. The moment I'm, I'm born, I'm born with the vasana, the seed of the sanskaras. See, those sanskaras, those impressions has given me this life, this attitude. It contains both good and bad. Right? And now, whatever the way I think in my life, I speak and act, is also causing the same impression. So it's a two-way process. Thought creates an impression, and the impression leads to an expression of a thought. So in that reference, chicken and egg, Definitely it is right. You understand? So I have an impression deeper inside. You see, for example, simple example, huh, Leslie. So your mind has a very indelible impression that is stored that the guys with the beard are always crazy. And then you see me. So that past impression is <laughs> expressed in the thought. You see, <coughs> one simple example. <laughs> so how should I take over the mind? Mind, you are making me crazy. You are branding others, the objects and the people outside in the world. You are pushing me to see in not in a right manner. You are pushing me to see the objects and the things and the relationship in ignorance. Let me drop the ignorance first and then I will see it. See what happens. Mind is totally light. It becomes totally free. You enjoy every moment in your life. So what that means? In our American phrase, a proactive Conscious journey to meditation is required to end suffering. 
I'm using proactive. You wake up in the morning, are you proactive? Is the mind clear? Or mind is guided and dictated by the previous impression. Do you find the time for meditation today, in the morning? No, I have to find it. Even for five minutes, let me go back, check. In the evening, yes. Before sleep, yes. Uh, that we covered a couple of weeks before. Yukta hara viharasya. Uh, remember, Krishna says, what says Krishna in Gita? Balanced, moderation. Moderation in eating, moderation in gossip also. <laughs> moderation in... Uh, moderation at every step in life will help reorganize the life and then you will find that I cannot do without meditation in my life. <coughs> this is what our master is saying. A proactive, conscious journey to meditation is required. Now with that understanding, what is the goal of yoga? Goal of yoga is to remove ignorance. Nothing else. You remove ignorance, you are already in meditation. I will continue to practice meditation, but I will not remove ignorance. Nothing will happen. I will continue to hate you. At the same time, continue to meditate. Hate is a feeling, an expression deposited in your mind, behind the thought. As long as that is there, meditation will not succeed. So, Ultimate goal is to remove the ignorance. Remove the ignorance. I told you, remove the ignorance means incomplete knowledge about myself. Who am I? I am my real self. My real self. Real self is made up of the peace and happiness. So I have, I live in right perception. So right perception gives me a right speech and action. Right thought and speech and action. Reverse it. I am not living in a, I am not living in wisdom. Then I say you are right, you are wrong, I love you, I hate you. What is this? Likes and dislikes. This will continue in the mind. This will cause attachment and detachment. I am again explaining through the Gita. So attachment and detachment you are constantly thinking. That thought pattern creates a desire, seeking happiness outside. So if the desire is fulfilled, it will cause greed, repeat desire. <clears throat> Honey, do you still love me? Repeat desire. <laughs> no, it... It appealed to me very strange, you know, when I came in 2007 and I was listening honey for everything. Honey for pet, honey for dad, honey for, you know, spouse. Then I said, this is a good word I will use in teaching. So, honey, do you have money? <laughs> so, so you see the desire, if it is fulfilled, that it needs a repeat desire. I live in total ignorance because I am looking for peace and happiness outside. That is what the greed is. And if the desire is not fulfilled, then I am angry, I am agitated, I am living in stress. So when mind swings like a pendulum, sometimes desire fulfilled, sometimes not fulfilled, it creates a kind of a delusion. I start living in delusion and the delusion causes the pride. The next step is pride, a sense of ego. I loved you so much. See, you are... Well, you can translate with reference to any object and the pride ultimately leads to strong jealousy, strong identification with the body. So the cycle continues. It means what? Thought creates the impression and the impression creates the thought. You have to break this cycle. This cycle causes the 
cycle of birth and death and that is what the law of karma is. You break here and now. From today, it is broken. Don't go to those teachers, they say, I will help you, I will bless you, then law of karma will be broken. It never happens. It's not a magic. You have to take charge of it. That is why Buddha said, I will take as many births until the last person is enlightened. Then Buddha said, give us the enlightenment. Everyone says, no, I cannot give you. I can point out the way. Nobody can give you awakening. Nobody can give you enlightenment. Every master says in the Eastern wisdom, it is your personal effort. It is your journey you have to undertake, without which nothing is possible. Nothing is possible. Any thought expressed in speech translates into action. It means action also originates from a modification of a mind. Now behind that action, if the mind is cooking the story that has an element of ego, the doership and the enjoyership, and seeking the fruits of an action, you are already trapped by the law of karma, impression, thought, impression, thought. You are is still living in ignorance and that will cause you problem. Simple, easy way to understand. The rest of the sutras are easy, uh, are very easy. Uh, it will take not even half an hour to understand, but Understanding should be such that it goes into from it goes into your intellect with the clarity, and then that knowledge descends down into your heart and you are inspired. Let me change my life now. I have understood. Half understanding in your intellect will give one-fourth of understanding to your student. So when they will raise questions, you will say, I, you, you, because you are not clear. You are not clear. Then what will happen? Karma, the law of karma again starts. If you are 100% clear, that clarity has been given to us by th more than 3,000 masters. No, but we are very busy. We will understand later. Then continue to suffer. Knowledge liberates you from the suffering. Do you remember? The real knowledge is one that liberates you from all kinds of suffering. That knowledge is yoga. The other knowledge gave, helps you to gain skill sets, expertise. You go to a medical school for six, seven years, you become a medical doctor. Do you get rid of the stress? <coughs> Ask yourself. That is why I stress yoga helps you. When you study yoga, you study yourself. The more you study yourself, the chances that as a teacher, you can easily help others. Easily, in a much natural way. Ah, 
other branches of the knowledge that you gain from outside. You gain an expertise. You may be a medical doctor, but still you are suffering from the stress. You may be a psychiatrist. Do you see the difference between the two? Now let me have any question. Uh, just to summarize, if I, you know, the the verse says, Vratayaha panchatayaha kleshta akleshtaha. So these thought patterns, you know, known as modification, whatever you want to say, content of the mind, <coughs> are infinite in number. Then Patanjali makes a big statement, still you can make the mind empty. What it takes, even if the mind is surrounded by trillions and billions of the thoughts, you can make it empty. It gives us a hope, a great hope. Then it says there are five classification. Now I gave an example. We all are human beings. So you can separate by color, by height, huh? by gender, by age, whatever it is. So that is, it means be very clear that all are basically thoughts. The mind should not give too much of importance to any thought. All are basically thoughts. Five types. But each type has two categories. Either they are painful or non-painful. It means there are total ten types. Any thought. Behind any thought. If there is discernment and dispassion, don't worry about anything. If there is avidya, means ignorance behind that thought. It means where you have to worry. It will create that impression. It will create a cycle, storehouse, karma shaya, and ultimately you will suffer. The last point, then I'll invite the questions. Now, have a very practical, pragmatic understanding. What is that? In your life. <clears throat> unfavorable, painful, anxious, failures in the life are there. You are already dictated by ignorance. Every day you wake up in the morning and your mind says, oh, it's totally unfavorable. Unfavorable circumstances, Leslie. Pain is there. I suffer from the pain every day. Everyone makes me crazy when the mind thinks like this. You are already dictated by the law of karma because of the ignorance behind every thought. It will accumulate what we say, lot of strong dislikes and likes. And these strong likes and dislikes are known as sins. We don't talk of the sin in a religious way. You can be the master of your destiny. question. So I like, um, of course you pick me for this, but I like the idea that... Because that... I like you. <laughs> oh, good. So you can torture me. Um, because sometimes, you know, sometimes I wake up and I feel like crap and I, I do easily cue into like the positive thoughts. Good. So I can, I do that, but I don't feel it. But what I just heard you say is that it is cumulative. So just keep doing it. Even if I don't feel it, it doesn't mean it's not doing anything. Is that right? Uh, first step, you are doing it right. Doing it 
first step is doing, but do it rightly so that you have a clarity in the intellect follows by the practice. The practice should also be there. If the practice is there, then you will start feeling it. Otherwise, it will simply become an affirmation without any realization. So I think you understand, if you remember the three steps, Shravanam, listening and learning the principles, then contemplation and reflection, positive thought. I hate Leslie, but now I should invite a thought that says I like Leslie. That does not make any difference. How it can make a difference? I have to inquire. I have put the mind to the task. Mind, why you are crazy? Why you say that I hate Leslie? Where is the hatred? You are reflecting on it, contemplating. This is the second step. When you contemplate and reflect, you are dropping that ignorance. So it is not merely an affirmation. So not only said, I will be in peace, and the mind says, you are crazy, you are already living in pain. <laughs> you have to <laughs> reflect on it. You have to challenge the mind. Mind, how dare you bring that thought? Why do you? Because that beer guy is a crazy guy, I have seen it. But why mind you are going there? Why mind you don't come to me? What the hell you are talking? You see, you are contemplating and reflecting on it. If you don't reflect, there will be no clarity in the intellect. When the clarity is not there, even if you repeat every day for years and years, there will be no change. Mm -hmm. You see, be very clear about it. Shravanam, listen, learn the principle, mananam, contemplation and reflection. Now what happens? <clears throat> See that. <clears throat> intellect is 100% clear. Intellect is 100% clear even in habit and addiction. Two part, you see that? I'm just explaining you that. <laughs> so you wake up in the morning, habit is to take a cup of tea, the intellect reminds you, you go to the kitchen and take it. Here, it's a, net, it's, a, it's a totally destructive because the mind is dictating the intellect. Mind is habitual. The mind says, I am crazy after the coffee. Now, in our case, it is the intellect is dictating over the mind. That is going to change the entire mind. Because you have a clarity of the knowledge. 100% is this clear. You wake up in the morning. And the mind says, the intellect says, peace is my essential nature. And the mind accepts it. The moment the mind accepts, that knowledge enters into your heart. It is going to change. That actually makes sense. Thank you. The crazy guy said something that makes sense. That Thank makes you. sense. Yes, yes, yes. That makes sense. So fundamentally, it is a common sense. We enter into nonsense <laughs> because of ignorance. Fundamentally, it is a common sense. Why should I think about you? Because I hate you. Why I hate you? Because that is... Another level of ignorance of likes and dislikes. Now I ask the question, by hating you, will I be able to love myself? No. How simple. Our talk therapy is unique. Psychotherapist talk therapy is not unique. I have to say that. Uh, Leslie asked a good, beautiful question. That's a process. I have to see inside thought, impression. Can I break the cycle? 
you break the cycle by 1,000 practices we have. But first three steps are there. Any meditation practice will do when your intellect is clear. You have a right knowledge. Any practice will do. And when that clarity is not there, even the Buddha comes to you and he says, do this, nothing will happen. Why? It is a self-discovery. I have to discover my real nature myself. You see, the mind seems to be relaxed and calm when it is guided by the intellect, with the right knowledge, right perception. You have given your life even a moment to break that cycle, what we see the law of karma. As long as I feel I am the doer and the enjoyer, my master used to say. As long as you feel you are the doer and the enjoyer in life, you are bound by the law of karma, do whatever you do. And the moment you break that cycle to understand who is the doer, I am the doer. Am I the speaker? How come? Lips. If I'm the speaker, it means I am lips. I'm not. I'm not. My body? I'm the body? No. How can I be a speaker? Get free. Animals do not have an identity as a doer in the enjoy. That's why they are always free. They are not bound by the law of karma. We are bound by the law of karma. I have done it. You see, I hated you so long. That's how I am here. <laughs> In the same way, I loved you so much. That's why I am suffering. Again, you guys to study yourself. When you study yourself, a revelation, knowledge takes place inside. And that leads us to the third sutra, Tada Drashtu Swarupe Avasthanam. You study yourself, what you get? Third sutra. You don't study yourself. What do you get? Fourth Sutra. Huh? The Fourth Sutra. What is that Fourth Sutra? <coughs> Vrati Sarupyam Itaratraha you study yourself, you reach to the highest state, tadadrashtu swarupe avasthanam, I know my real self. If you don't, fourth step, tada, uh, what is that, um, vrati sarupyam itaratraha, 
in the absence of that state of mindfulness means I am ignorant about real self, the mind will take over. How the mind will take over? By the three gunas. What the three gunas does? Three gunas dictate over the body, mind, life, speech and action by the guidance of the five-fold klesha suffering. And then we suffer, we suffer, we suffer and we blame, we complain, we react. That is the summary of our life. Choices of us.